Then we'll check the back on. Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to the workshop. And uh, today we're joined, we've got special guests. We're joined by Deb today from Sherman, Texas. There we are. So yeah, all the way from Texas. So we thought we'd open up today's live stream and um, yeah, and just ask Deb a few questions. Um, so you're, you're, a, you're a fellow woodcarver. I'm a fellow woodcarver. Yeah. So what, what, sort, what sort of things do you enjoy carving? What, well, what's, what's your favourites? My favourite, I started out carving um, little ornaments yeah. for my family. And I'd, I'd mail them over, you know, at Christmas time. Brilliant. Little Christmas trees. So across the Wales? Across the Wales and, and uh, Herefordshire. That's my family lives. Oh, nice, nice part of the world yeah. as well. Yeah. Monmouth and uh, Herefordshire, Simmons Jack Brilliant. kind of way. Fantastic. Yeah, so I would uh, carve little Father Christmases, little snowmen. Fantastic. And um, paint in them as well? Oh, yeah, paint them. Lovely. Give them a coat of paint, uh, antique them. Yeah, and yeah. you're you're touring. Are you touring around Wales, or are you? Right now, actually, I'm going back to Newport today. Uh, Fantastic. That's where my brother lives. Yeah. Then I'm going to go back up to Monmouth, and I don't like to plan too many days ahead. No. So there's no telling. Because you could end up in a, the middle of a live stream. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so right, what we're going to do as well today, um, we're going to do some scroll sawing. Uh, but we just thought it'd be nice, as Deb was here, just to share some some thoughts, some ideas. Um, YouTube, do you use YouTube much? I use YouTube to build a house. I use YouTube Fantastic. for everything. Brilliant. Yes. Brilliant. I'm just thinking as well. I, I planned everything out and I, 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 oh, there it is. I was looking at, I couldn't see what I've done with my ear defenders. I'm gonna check as well. I'm gonna check everything's working. We've got the preacher bear with us. Good afternoon. So he, you're with us, that's good as well, because it means I can see the comments. Yeah. Because you never know with that. So, before, right, what we're going to do, I will take hold of a few of the items and come and have a quick sit down. There we go, there's, there's my mask that I use. Yeah. So always need some sort of protection for the uh, for the eyes with the, from the scroll saw. The scroll saw. And um, so what we're going to be making, we've got a Welsh dragon, we've got a Welsh dragon themed, um, that's gonna be a candle holder, and we're gonna have a daffodil themed, uh, probably a fridge magnet. That will be stack cutting with all of this. So hopefully, we'll end up with two candle holders and three fridge magnets, and all ready, ready to go. We've got a house themed uh, key ring. It's a perfect for house keys. There we are. What's your favourite wood for carving as well? I use a lot of basswood. Basswood. Um, what we call it, we call it flowering lime. Okay. More, more, yeah, that's right. Lime. More, more well yeah. known, especially in the US, more well known yeah. as basswood. Yeah. So there we are. Brilliant. Yeah. I better get on the scroll. So get on there. Scroll. I'll move the camera around as well so everyone can see. There we are. Any questions as well? Any questions myself and for Deb as well? Any questions? Yeah. Any get, questions for me? Get them in and uh, we do our best to answer. Uh, oh, we got a question. Uh, asking what attracted you to carving? There we are. Me or I you? Think, I think it's for yourself. Well, if you go, you go first okay, while I'm I'll setting go up. First. I'll set up the camera. You so, go first. First, it's been a few years. Um, I would go to the art festivals in Sherman, Texas. Yeah. And I'd see all these little old guys carving wood with, you know, with with knives. And I year after year, I'd talk to them, and then I decided I'll just start carving myself. Fantastic. So I've been carving a few years now. Brilliant. Watch and die on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. And you also mentioned there's another YouTuber you said that um you you enjoy. Um, oh, up in, yeah, Canadian guy. Yeah, yeah. Doug Linker. I yeah. like to watch him. Yeah, yeah. brilliant. Fantastic. Yeah. Oh, and this, that's the nice thing with carving and with the with with woodworking, with scrolls, sort of with all the different parts. There's so many different there's so many different things, and then yeah. you can find the thing that you enjoy the best. Yeah, brilliant. Good way of doing it. Uh, oh, and he, he said both. So I'll answer mine as well. Uh, how did I get into wood carving? Uh, I was lucky. I grew up around it. So yeah. Dad started the workshop back in 1975. And uh, yeah, basically went on went on from there. Um, and and I, I just grew up around it, had access to the tools and materials, and away you go. Off you go. The rest, as they say, is, is history. Yes. 
There we are. Right. I'm going to get scroll store in. You're going to finish your coffee? I'm going to finish my coffee. There we are. And any questions it's anyone's good got? Good, good. And I'll give Dad a shout as well. There we are. There. I'm about to start my live stream, okay? So if you're if you're around. Okay. Okay. I can carry on, can't I? Yeah, you can carry on. Yeah. We're just answering a few questions about how we got into carving and things like that. So you'll have to explain as well after. Right, we shall do a little bit of scroll sorrow. Okay, I will go on. No problem. It would help if I put the plug in properly first. <laughs> there we go. I must have stood on the cable when I went past it, but there we are. A false start. Right, so we stop now and we just explain a bit about the method we do it. Oh, we got another one there. I bought a set of Japanese walnut soup spoons and wanted to make something so nice. Ah, so another another way of being inspired to get started with yeah. wood carving, see? So just to explain the method as well of what we're doing. So we start off, we do the pierce work first of all. So generally speaking, what I try to do, oops, that's the ear, that's the ear defenders crash into the floor. Uh, what we try to do, we do any inside cuts, do them first of, first of all. So both of the internal cuts on either side of the house, that's the first part of the process, and then you cut the surround. It just means see, we can keep it secured, keep it all together. To it. Yeah. You can hang on to it, um, as opposed to separating it. Once you separate the three layers, yeah. then you can't keep, keep cutting it out, basically. And the other little trick then that we use, we use a larger piece of wood quite often on the base. Yeah. So you've got more surface area. It keeps your hands a bit further away from the blade. Right. So especially when you're starting out, if you can get those hands away from the blade, yeah. it's good for your confidence. And it just means that you're not, you know, you're not sort of, um, you're not thinking about that blade, despite the fact it's a very safe machine, the scroll saw, in comparison to, you mentioned the table saw yeah. earlier on. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a, it's a lot safer in many ways. And then in terms of the process, so what we do, you just feed that blade into the hole that you pre-drilled. So I can hear Dad, he's working on the drill just in next door. And then you tighten it up, 
put the tension on the machine. Away and away you go. There we are. We'll finish off this, this little one here. Any other comments as well on the live stream, let us know. And uh, yeah, we'll do our best to help out. There we are. So we've got all of our internal cuts. They're already done on there. The three layers as well. We've got a piece of chestnut on the back. The middle layer, we're looking at that one. That is the sapwood of the juniper. I think you call that in the US uh, fragrant cedar. Does that sound familiar? Cedar, yeah. Seed, yeah, it's, and then the top layer, the, the same. Only it's got some of the heartwood in there as well. Um, is it a timber you've carved before? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. Car like that wood. Carves nicely. Yeah. And it's very nice with the with the different cedars, the, the perfume that you get on there when, when you're carving uh, I'm thinking there's there's a there's a few few of them turn, turned up yet, but we'll see uh, see as, as things go along. I'm just glad my, my comment section is, is back because the, <laughs> the one live stream I did, I could, nobody could uh, well, I couldn't see any comments, so any questions anybody was asking, I couldn't see them. Right, I'm gonna cut the outline of this one. And then we've got the other few there to cut out. And then hopefully I'll get time to do a little bit of carving. Let's uh, cut this profile.
So that's by using that stack cutting technique. See, you can see that we get three. One, ooh, that one's sticking together. Let's have a little look, break that apart. Sometimes what I need to do, yeah, that one there, that's well stuck together. So you've got one layer, like so. It's basically a good little technique for working on the scroll saw where you get more layers, where you get more out of each cut that you do. So it's a really useful technique. So what I'm gonna do, just off the camera here, I'm just gonna try and get a gouge in between the two layers, a chisel, sorry, not a gouge. Um, and just separate them out. There you go, there go. just like so. There we go, so we've got three little key rings. Nice. Ready for carving. Yeah. What should we go on to next? Do you reckon the fridge magnet or the dragon? I think the dragon. The dragon? Yeah. Here we are, so we're Who gonna cut out. the Welsh dragon? Yeah, absolutely. We're <laughs> gonna cut out that profile. For the Welsh dragon. And this one is gonna be um that one is going to be a, a candle holder is the plan originally i was actually looking to do um a, a fridge magnet with that yeah but i thought it was a bit i thought it was a bit on the big side for a fridge magnet right so that was why we ended up with the where we've turned it into a, a candle holder it's quite difficult actually because the small if i go much smaller with the dragon to get it down to fridge magnet size i think it's going to be I think it's going to be quite intricate, intricate. To, to, to cut out, but we'll have to try. We'll have to try at some stage to see if we can do a, a fridge magnet version. So let's have a look. The two layers that I've got, uh, they're both mahoganies. The top layer, if anything's a better quality mahogany. Have you worked in mahogany at all? No. No? Um, what you find with mahogany, uh, they, they do tell us there's between two and three thousand different types in the world. Oh, yeah. And they're all different. Yeah. And some of them are better quality mahogany. So, for instance, the 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 bases that I'm using, they're actually cheaper mahoganies, and um, we refer to them as slightly furry mahoganies. Then. Yeah. They're they're not as good a quality as the top layer is slightly better. Not the best, but about a middle of the road standard. Yeah. And you, this is something we always wonder about it. I don't know, but. Um, some people who speak to say, oh, I don't like mahogany. I always wonder, is it a case of um, they've used a lower quality mahogany? Maybe. Because if you use, for instance, a Honduras mahogany or a Brazilian mahogany to start, yeah. then those are really good quality. But if you use um, one of some of the Asian mahoganies, they're what we refer to as furry mahoganies, and they're, they're lower quality. So there's a massive difference between working in the yeah. two. Here we are. Oh, hello, everybody. From us, or how, how would you say that? Wow, the dragon is going to look awesome. Yeah, I hope so. How would you pronounce that? Hot, hoss, hoss, she? Oh, no, that says awesome. The, that one there, above it, the name. Hoshi. 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 Hello, Hoshi. There we are. We Hoshi. hope, we, we hope we're pronouncing it correctly, <laughs> but thank, thanks for joining us again. And uh, yeah, great to have you with us. Yeah, hopefully that dragon will come out looking nice. But there we are. You can also hear in the background Thomas the Woodcarver, he's on the other scroll saw as well, so there's plenty of scroll sawing going on at the moment.
might notice it. Um, I stopped the scroll saw to turn it round. Reason yeah, it for does. it. The reason I do it is because if, if sometimes, if you don't do that, you can just catch it as you yeah. turn around and it jumps and it can spoil a little bit of what your scroll saw. And because that's quite a delicate little bit just in by the, the nose of the dragon there and the tongue, um, by doing that, it just avoids that, that little problem. So we're always trying to anticipate where the where the problems might might come um but we still make mistakes we still make plenty of those but um but that's what you're trying to do is to try and anticipate what right. might happen oh we got somebody else who's joining us um amazing ender hello there thanks for joining us and the carver yeah we are we got a we got my friends here from um from virginia we were just talking about you because we got we got deb here joining us in the live stream from Texas, special guest today. Yeah. If you, see if you come to our workshop on a Monday, there's a good chance you end up in our live stream. <laughs> <laughs> so, what have you got here? Um, well, the dragon, you know, um, it's it. I've actually made a love spin. Fantastic. And your videos help a lot. Brilliant. Oh, I'm delighted to hear that. That's great stuff. Fantastic. Yeah, with more love spoons, we need more love spoons being made throughout the world. So, fantastic. Glad to hear that. And uh, hello to everyone. So, thank you for joining us. It's a, it's it's now a sunny West Wales. The sun has now come out. It's beautiful this weather. Yeah, have you noticed though in Wales it, it, the weather's quite changeable, isn't yes. it? I suppose you, well, you you grew up in Wales, so you, you're, I did. you're well I versed did. with Welsh weather. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's improved now. But how does it come? Texas. Texas. Bit, bit hotter. Very much so. Yeah. Yeah. So when I left, I think it was like thirty nine. Fantastic. Yeah. Bit different here. Yes. Similar out where, where my, my wife is from in, in Spain, they, they were having a heat wave out there. Is that hot for Texas or is it is That's that more getting, standard? It's getting it's getting, getting it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think Thomas the Woodcarver, he struggles to cope with twenties, so um, <laughs> I don't think he cope with Texas. Right, so as well, just to explain to everyone, what we're going to do, we're going to just cut around these little bits of detail. Um, the piece you've got to be de uh, careful with, where they get delicate, is just to the front of the, the claws of our dragon. Um, yeah, other than that, what I've done as well, this isn't the full, full dragon. I've simplified it slightly. I actually do a more elaborate dragon than this again, um, but I simplified it slightly because it's going to be a candle holder on the love spoons. I have a more simple version and I have a more elaborate version that we do again. But any questions that we're going along, get them into us.
and what's great about having New Year as well is um, I'm thinking about some of the things that I do, and um, I don't normally explain. And uh, oh, I see. Well, because as I was doing that, I'm thinking you're watching me doing that, and you're probably watching certain bits and thinking, has he gone mad for a moment? Because <laughs> um, we go back over that, and we're we're sort of feather edging. And I tell you, I, I've never thought about this before. When I'm doing the live stream, I've never explained it before. What it is, if you just look in, I put it in front of the camera, first of all, and then I'll show Deb. Um, just on the top of the tongue there, there's a little line where it's burnt. Can you see where the blade, where it's turned? Can you see? It's just burnt. Can you see just a yeah. burn? Right. Yeah. So what I do then is I'll go back over that to take yeah. the little burn line out. Yeah. So it just cleans up your work. As right. you're going along, um, probably when people are watching on the live stream, they're probably thinking I've drifted off for a couple of minutes <laughs> and they're just not concentrating on what I'm doing. But that's basically uh, what we're doing. Um, well, we got, um, oh, we got a few comments. Danny, did you give the, a proper howdy? <laughs> <laughs> that's from the Carver in, in Virginia. Um, and then we've got um, Texas, where everything is bigger and hotter. Exactly. Texas is good for that. I'm on the other side of the country in rural Virginia. Um, good old Dixie State. And then you got correct. Must be nice there. Brilliant. Well, it's great to have you all with us. And uh, yeah, so we were saying Texas, you, you'd be well suited to Texas. Yeah. 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 What's, the, what's the maximum temperature you can cope with? Oh, yeah. I'm okay after about 20 degrees. About 20 degrees. <laughs> yeah, that's about your, your yeah. capacity, isn't it? It's 39 when I left. Oh, boss. <laughs> and the comment was, it's getting there. It's getting there. <laughs> I, that's think, I, don't, I, I don't think Thomas Woodcarver would cope well with that. I wish I was in Dixie. There we are. <laughs> <laughs> where, where, where was you that then? <laughs> I that would be where, where, over where, where, on the east side. Yeah, yeah. wrong area. Yeah, wrong area. but that's okay. Is it a bit cooler over there? Uh, you know what? I've never lived there. Oh, oh, yeah. um, How are you doing? Yeah. No, it probably yeah. isn't. Well, no. it would be. Yeah. Go through. There we are. Well, it's um, no, it, it's 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 good. For, I, I've learned a lot as well with um with doing live with doing the live streams, with doing YouTube and stuff like right. that. Right. I've learned a lot of geography, which is great. Yeah. And then when we when we sell the different spoons, I always check out on the map. I check where where they've actually right. gone to. So I always look on the map. You mountains. know, coming down on the train, there were like four or five Welsh guys. Yeah. And I had a little geography uh, class just listening to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they were fun. Oh, it's 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 <laughs> great. So it's it's, it's Britain. We we sold different spoons all over, and then you're looking, and I always remember. Um, there was one I'll have to ask Dad, and he remembers a song about it. And he, in his head, he he never realised it was an actual place. So he <laughs> saw it on there, and it as he saw it, it was. Um, there we are. They've, they've been enjoying um, Thomas Woodcarver singing. He did. Uh, true story. He did actually have the same music teacher as Tom Jones. Did he really? Yeah, but people don't throw the same things at him when he starts singing. So. Uh, <laughs> um, where we, what we got here, nothing better than raising the children in beautiful mountains of the Appalachia. Sounds fantastic. Uh, I'm a bit, big fan of the Bible Belt, Dixie States, country music and history. Sing it, Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wish I were Dixie. Uh, yeah. Uh, we're enjoying the music uh, by the sounds uh, of it. It's the yellow, is it, uh, it, would it be the Yellow Rose of Texas? Would that be? You got it. Yeah. 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 There we are. We'd get Thomas Wood Carver yeah, singing we'll get it now. Him singing that <laughs>
Out of the dragon, right? We'll show you that now. Um, smoking light and rain keep falling. Uh, hi, I'm in Brazil and I watch your lines. Keep it up. Well, thank you. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, Appreciate it. Up. It's nice. We, we, over the over the years, we've had people in the live streams join us from all over South Africa and Australia. Really? That's nice. All over the UK and um, uh, 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 mainly, as, as I said, the, the the biggest audience we get and the biggest. Um, support is is the US um, we were also explaining we've had a we've had one video um, yeah if anyone's watching all of you watching the live stream go and find the the one of our shorts um, I, I I I think it's gone what they would call is is sort of vi is going it's gone a bit viral it's been very popular in, in, in Indonesia um, Which one is it? there we are well, you'll find one of our shorts it was a Celtic it was a Celtic heart um, a Celtic heart themed scroll saw project. It's only okay. a one minute video. Um, and it's had 50,000 views in the last two days. I've got no idea. But wow. apparently, Celtic design, very popular in Indonesia, yeah. obviously. So, Celtic. But it's, um, it's the weird and wonderful world of, of, of oh, YouTube. Really? <laughs> it's it's what, what keeps it good fun. So, you can see with this, we're, we're cutting out all of these um, uh, different, different parts of it. So, we've got most of the front. Of the dragon cut out. Um, I'm just checking it on the back as well, just to see if everything's okay. The back layer as well. Sometimes you have a, little, a few little rough 
parts to it. All we would do, we put it on the belt sander. Back home, we've got a belt sander. Yeah. Useful bit of kit, isn't oh, it? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Um, and the, and definitely the, the scroll saw is a great addition to to anything that so any workshop. That paper, right, that you got on there. Yeah. What type of glue glues that down? PVA. Cheap and cheerful. Yeah. PVA it. glue. Yeah. So what we would do, we would put PVA glue on the paper. Uh, yeah. PVA glue on the wood, yeah. and then the same brush, just brush over the top of it to get it nice and flat. The only thing with it, if you make a mistake when you're putting it down and you yeah. need to move it or something like that, it right. gets it turns into a nightmare because you can rip it and yeah. it and it can sort of it can crease and things like that. So you've got to try and be as precise as yeah. you can when you're actually putting it um, down originally. But yeah, just PVA glue solution on on the top of it. Some of the PVA glues are better than others. So we used to same with everything. I think. I don't know if it's the same with yourselves in the US, but we're finding everything seems to be getting worse and worse quality. Yeah. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> very quick, <laughs> a very quick answer. Um, and so what's happening is um, that, that as, as we're using that, that PVA glue, we find that we have to glue the wood and the design. We used to just glue the design yeah. and then just put water on the wood but it doesn't work right. as well now, so we're using glue on, yeah. on both parts. But yeah, simple. And what it means, we used to use carbon paper, and we used to also, as you saw at the back, the templates. Yeah, But yeah. because we haven't, um, we, we, it, it's, it's just quicker, draw it on, on paper and stick it on the wood so you don't have to draw it again. Yeah. And to reproduce it, we just print it off. Yeah. So that's why we have all the templates on the website if you want to use them for free. Yeah, you can print them off. And uh, I don't know if I've got a dragon on there. I'll have to put a dragon on there as well. Yeah. Are we missing anything? Um, legal heart. Uh, and one German. There yeah. we are. We've got the Germans in as well. Fantastic. <laughs> Germans Celtic in the house. Heart is, although the other carvers just noticed, the Celtic heart is actually up to 79,000 views. <laughs> Fantastic. YouTube's gone mad. <laughs> Something's gone wrong with the algorithm there. <laughs> there we are. So, yeah, popular in Indonesia. I'll have to think of some Celtic designs. See if we can get the Indonesians enjoying. <laughs> Fantastic. Delighted yeah, that they're enjoying the Celtic designs. Right, now we got how many cuts? We've got one, two, three, four, five cuts to go. Oh, there's one there. Six cuts to go. And then I think we'll cut the surround, we'll cut out the base, and then we do some carving. All right. earlier because we were doing a bit of filming over there but if you want to turn them off it'll uh, focus everyone's attention on what we're, we're carving. Uh, the carver well deserved I think they deserve lots of an attention etc. No thank you appreciate it but uh, yeah we we bit 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 of a bit of a surprise that it it, it sort of um, has gone flying up like that the one video. Thomas Woodcarver's peeping over the top of the back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the last street's good. There we are. 
There we go. We're doing, we're, we're doing a, um, what do you call this one? A, a, a candle holder, we are, so. Oh, but I tried to simplify. Oh, it's very appropriate, because it's the dragon. There we are. Jeez. There we are. Yeah. <laughs> the flame. Wow. Well, you yeah, you I, intended that, anyway. Yeah, I, I, that's exactly what I thought yeah. of. And, it, and, it's, and it's mahogany, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So, I did think of that, because it got red. It's dry gorch. Dry gorch, yeah. Did you, did you, when you were living in Wales, did you speak Welsh? No. No, same, no, same with ourselves. Yeah. We didn't. Did you have it in school when no. you were? No. no. I think it. It was at that period, that time that it wasn't being taught. No. You know, unless you were like deep down into Wales, but yeah. But it's come. I've noticed now that it's coming back a lot, which is great. Yeah, it it is. There's a yeah. big big revival in yeah. in in Welsh speaking, and they're they're pushing it in um in the schools yeah. that sort of thing, um and. I mean, myself, we, we, I did do some in school, Yeah. but it, it, you, you chose to do it in school. You didn't have to, you had a choice of uh, French, German yeah. and Welsh. And ironically, the only second language I speak is Spanish because <laughs> of my, my background, my wife. Um, uh, but, but it, yeah, the, the three that we had the choice to do in school, I, I didn't, I didn't do. Right. Yeah. There was a question there about blades. Our number one blade that we use the most is the Niqua Speed Reverse Tooth Number Nine blade. But we were explaining to Deb, um, in the US, the exact same blade is the Flying Dutchman Number Nine Reverse Tooth blade. Um, I don't know what the history is, but I, I think they're pretty much. I think they're made in the. I think they're the same. They are the same blade, probably right. made in the same factory, um, and then they're just branded as as yeah. Flying Dutchman and, and Niqua. We've also used the number nine Pebeco blades. Yeah, and perhaps, perhaps Niqua means something else to you. I don't know. <laughs> I wonder, would it be a situation? So for instance, here, there's the company um, General Motors. They own Opel and they own um, Vauxhall. Right. And Vauxhall's very famous here. So they, they, they call them Vauxhalls here, but everywhere else they're called Opals, the cars. Yeah. And so, um, so yeah, we, we still call them Vauxhalls. So I wonder if Flying Dutchman was a, a famous brand you know, it in the be US. You know, because like, yeah. over in the US they have like Volkswagen um, Golf, yeah. but they call it the, the Volkswagen Rabbit. Yeah. Yeah, but, it, but it's the same thing. It's the same thing. So, yeah. it's, I think it may be marketing, yep. so they use the same name. We've got one question here. Do you make horseshoe shaped designs with horses' names? One can make a horseshoe picture frame for a young rider and their horse. Yeah, you can do you can do all of that sort of thing. Um, yeah, and we we sort of we've designed out all sorts of different things like that. Um, there's a few, we've done, we tend to do smaller sort of plaques and things like that. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, you know, it's not a, a not a complicated job. Um, we, we, we were demonstrating a live stream doing a, a horseshoe with a horse inside. Um, I can show you at the end of the live stream that one there, but it's a lot smaller and then a name. So for instance, on the weekend, I was designing a 10 inch plaque. The only problem with doing that, because we work in hardwoods, that's quite a large piece of wood. The diameter gets quite expensive to do something like that. But yeah, we could do something like that. That would be a cool design. I tell you what, I'll have a look for, for next week. Horse, horseshoe with the horse and a name. There we are, I'll have a look for you. See if I can do something um, for, for next week's live stream. Saves me having to think of something to do yeah. for next week, then, sir. You already know. <laughs> Horseshoes, right. I'll have, to, I'll have to write that down, otherwise I'll forget.
That's looking fantastic. It's it's coming on, isn't it? Yeah. And it's um yeah, I decided I, I was I did mark it out with two to cut that out in two, but I thought no, nah, it'll be strong enough and it'll save me a bit of time if I just come right around the outside there. So we've got three little bits more. I'll cut the surround and I think I'll leave the base. I'll cut that out another time and I'll, I'll go across to the bench and we show some uh, we show show some carving as well. Show how we'd we'd go about carving this one out. We got it'll be a few little delicate bits in and around the the the, the feet of the dragon. Actually, I'll do those next because if anything's going to go wrong. I should really be, if, if I was really um, organising it correctly, you're probably best to do the claws first. Yeah. Because you're always trying to work out what's the thing that's most likely to go wrong. Right, right. To save yourself the time, um, uh, you know, where where you go and make a mistake and because these things happen. Yeah, they do. All right, we go work it out. We do all of these claws and then just that bit around the tail. When you're carving those, um, the little claws on the feet, that's actually the bit that's most likely to break. There's a that, that, that's, that's sharing a bit of uh, a bit of insight in terms of how many times have I broken those. <laughs> so it's always worth. I've left a little bit of extra wood there yeah. to try and when it comes to the carving, just to make it a little bit easier. Um, so hopefully I won't go and go and break it. That's why you, 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 that's why whenever you're doing the scroll sawing, you, you refer to them, they're guidelines and they're literally that, you know, they're lines right. to guide. Um, I always say, if you need to go away from the guidelines, do it and don't stick rigidly because it can cause a problem. Oh, what have we missed here? Hello there, silver, silver granny and her grumpy gnome. Uh, <laughs> can you give an approximate shipping cost to America, uh, North Carolina? Uh, is this asking us? Um, if you're asking us for shipping costs to North North America, um, if it's on our website, if you're looking, because I mean our website is all selling love spoons, um, it, it, it basically, um, I think the postage we do is four ninety nine because it's the postage is written into the price of the product basically that we're selling on there, so it's a flat rate. If it's a a, a scroll saw piece, for example, then it would have to be, um, if it would have, it would have to be, um, that we, it would be, yeah, that would be what we would call a bespoke piece, and I would price it individually. Um, the other thing then you've got, if you're looking for wood carving and stuff like that, you've got people like the carver who's already in the US and can do all sorts of different things. Um, that's the, uh, the work is very unique and perfect for anniversary presents. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, you can find our uh, website. It's just put in the Love Spoon Workshop. That's, that's our contact on that. And um, yeah, but if you look at the carving stuff as well, the carver would be cheaper on postage because he's already in the US. He's already there. There we are.
We use that little trick again, stop the machine just to get it in the right angle to cut that piece out because there's a good chance that you're going to go and uh, mess it up. So easier to stop the machine, reposition it and away you go. So last internal cuts. It's taking shape, isn't it? It's getting it's looking, there. It's looking beautiful. <laughs> Um, I'm not going to get onto your stream and try to take potential customers. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know. I want to know when. Uh, I, I I got I got an idea. Now we're going to have to do. We're going to have to do um, guest appearances on the live stream. Yeah. Deb's, Deb's the first guest appearance. Yeah. So we're going to have to get all guest appearances every every week. So what's his name in Virginia? It's Brian, it is, Brian. The, the carver. Yeah, Brian the carver, come on over. Yeah, we'll have to get you across, you'll have to do a guest appearance. I'll, I'll do the scroll saw and you can do the carving. There you go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Although I say that, he does do scroll sawing as well. <laughs> <laughs> So I think what we do, we cut out the surround and then we take we take this one and the houses that we've done and we put them on the bench and we'll um, we'll we'll do some carving for everyone to see. So I'll have to push everything back then see and uh, yeah we'll go across onto the bench and do some carving. So there we are. We got the we got that dragon shape. Now it's the surround. So that gives us our profile of our dragon. So we've got our two dragons there. A little bit of wood just stuck in the top of there. So, oops, excuse me, spitting at it now. There we are. So, or oh, on that point, actually, um, it's, it's just reminding me of something, not the, not the spitting. Um, <laughs> we, I did see a comment on one of the um, scroll saw pages and somebody was talking about um, they were talking about what they do after they finish scroll sawing. I just move all of that around here. Um, yes, yeah, somebody was talking about when they scroll saw to get rid of the dust. They they use water, and they said, "Oh, but um, when I went back and checked the piece, it had bowed really badly. It had really shaped badly." 
basically, yeah, if you're working with seasoned woods, if you put water on it, yeah. it's gonna it's gonna shake, it's gonna go terrible. So um and some pieces will go worse than others. Um but yeah, it's something that I read and somebody was asking it, so I've never had this happen to me before. Um but pretty much um as a method for getting the dust off. Um, I'll be honest with you, I never worry about it too much because always when it comes to the dust, we use shellac, shellac sanding sealer. Yeah. And when you put the shellac on, it'll it'll take most of the dust away. And if not, we just use a we just use a brush and brush it I away. I just use a brush. Yeah, so just brush away the dust and uh, and away you go. Right. You know, I have seen people spray the wood with, with water. Right. And and they just do. What's the what's the thinking behind it? Interesting. I, I kind of think that it brings the grain out. A ah, more. similar. Well, and it looks pretty. I'm with you. Yeah, of course. Um, similar to <laughs> similar to the shellac. So yeah. With shellac, it raises the grain, and so the water the water will do exactly the same thing. So if you put water on, uh, yeah, of course it will it will it will do that. It will raise the grain in the same way. That we use the um, shellac. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. Good idea. Good idea for uh, before you do your sanding, put the yeah. water on, and it raises the grain. Right. So I just check. Have we missed anything on there as well? Um, let's have a little look. Um, how much time ahead do you need to allow the for uh, event for carving? Um, and was, uh, uh, I said, oh, have you seen? Uh, she to the where she passed away too soon. Um, but I don't know if those stuff all the right softens the wood, raises the grain. Yeah. Um, do you post your work? Um, so there's a few different ones. My wife has it on her Instagram. I'm not sure. I think there's a. I think there's a, another conversation going on there. I think. If yeah. It, if yeah. It, if it is a question, if it is a question for ourselves. Um, yeah, ask ask again, and uh, we we'll, we'll see what it is. I'm not quite following the trail there. I don't think. Right. So first one I'm going to do little house, just like so. So a simple little carving. So this is what we do a lot of is where we use in combination we use the scroll saw skills, and then afterwards we refine it then with the uh, with the hand carving skills. Um, I think if it's somebody asking me in terms of notice for carving, wow, at the moment I got a long waiting list if it's asking myself because um, my waiting list at the moment is actually up until October. I was explaining to, to Deb earlier, we, we had a few appearances on, on TV earlier in the year and because it's only really myself and dad doing the carving, we don't. it doesn't take much for us to get inundated and, and really uh, slow us down in terms of um, the time scale. Now with the carving, we're working with our vintage gouges. And um, this one here, this is a, a Herring Brothers, made in London over a hundred years ago. And uh, they made some good gouges, some good steel. If you do come across them, worth searching on places like eBay and anything like that to try and come across them because they really do a fantastic job. So the idea behind this little key ring then is thinking, you know, in terms of putting house keys on. So a simple little cottage design and uh, perfect for hanging your keys on. So yourself, would you class yourself? Where would you where would you say in terms of nationality? Would you class yourself as Welsh or? I would say Welsh. Yeah, yeah. I got the Welsh flag flying. Yeah. In the front yard. I got the Welsh flag on the car. Yeah. And in terms of people around you, then are they? Because uh, sometimes we've actually had people asking us um, where Wales is. How aware oh, do you nobody find? Oh, has a clue over there. There we are. <laughs> Which you know, I, I call it uh, United Kingdom's best kept secret. Yeah, yeah. 
everybody knows, you know, England, obviously England, but yeah, but uh, Scotland and Ireland. Yes, and absolutely. Nobody has a clue about Wales. We don't do much. Of, we don't do the best job in in Wales of actually promoting it and getting it known internationally. Really, do we? It's it, as you say. This is the best kept secret. I think it is. Yeah. Um, because it's the same now when we go out to Spain. Um, they actually refer to. They don't use the words. Um, well, you will occasionally hear Reino Unido, which is United Kingdom, um, but they mainly refer to it as England. Yeah. Um, and that goes for. You know, the whole island then, the whole island of the UK, they'll yeah. refer to as England. So you'll occasionally hear Gallus, usually, which is Wales, but usually only to do with football. Is the only time you'll hear it referred to. Goodbye. Football, because they, they're not so keen with the rugby. No. No. Do you manage to get get to watch any of the rugby? I do, I do occasionally. Yeah? Yeah, which is great. Although at the moment, it's probably best if you don't. <laughs> They've had a few ups and downs. I think their next, their next one, they're, they're going out to South Africa, which is always a tough tour. And I can always follow my brother on Facebook to see what he's saying. About that, uh, yeah. Whether things are good or bad. Yeah. With the rugby. Absolutely. <laughs> so now this one, you can see just a, a simple... Simple little carving. I think we're going to do slightly bigger windows on this one. Just like so. There we are. And then we're just going to do a little bit of bit of carving on the surround. Whoop. And Bob's your uncle. And there we are. We hear, we hear, when we hear a funny little noise like that, one is always a bit suspicious, but I don't think it's anything serious. I think it was actually the the wood in the vice just creaking. But you're always suspicious. Do it yourself, when you're carving, then do you secure it in a vice or do you hold Sometimes. it in your hand? Sometimes. Yeah? Yeah, I just carved uh, probably like nine or ten buses, Greyhound buses. Right. For... Um, an organization that that I belong to, and they're called the Freedom Riders. Right. So it's way back, you know, in the history of United States when you had uh, Martin Luther King and, you know, all that going on. Yeah, yeah. And the, the Freedom Riders were the ones that got on, were the African Americans who got on the bus. Right. Whereas back then they weren't supposed to. Yeah. So... I carved, um, yeah, like nine or ten buses. Brilliant. Yeah. And so, in terms of securing those, would you do you do you hold them in a vice? Do you plant them, yes, or do you? That, yeah. yeah, yeah. Brilliant. And then afterwards, do you paint those, or? I what I did, I painted just a little bit. Yeah. And then, um, and then I just put a nice finish on them. Fantastic. And the wood, was it the basswood you used it for that one? It was the basswood, yeah. yeah. Is it easy to get hold of basswood where you are? Or? Yes. It, 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 it was difficult to begin with because I was, you know, getting it mailed to me. Yeah. And then uh, now there's a place a little bit close to Dallas that I can go and just buy planks of it. Fantastic. Instead of small pieces. Brilliant. It's always better if you can buy larger, oh, larger yeah. quantities. So you can save a lot of money. On it, have we missed any there, or I don't think we've missed too we, much, have we? Yeah, no, not really. Good. So for the dragon, what we tend to do is we will get our levels. So we're gonna drop all of the. I tend to start off with the tongue. Have you carved a dragon before? No. Right. So this would be one for for yourself. Coming from Wales, for you to this is the. Very popular, very popular little carve in this one. So what I've done, I've done certain things to try and simplify it. So I tend to start with the with the tongue, and we just drop the level of that down, and then working just above it, just to angle angle the cut back the other way. Now the same, same just in by there, just angling that tongue back like so, and then somebody coming through the door. And then what we're going to do 
we just try and drop the levels down. So this is a carving that we would do regularly, but what I've tried to do for this um, particular piece, I've tried to simplify it slightly. So we're doing the stop cuts. So for instance, there's usually a bit more detail just in this bit here, and I've simplified it. Normally goes down and in and round. So I'm just experimenting with the dragon to see if I can find a slightly simpler method. But it's a series of stop cuts into the woods. And we've got a nice piece of mahogany that we're carving in. I certainly would recommend, if you've never carved with mahogany before, certainly a, a nice wood for you to have a go at carving. You mentioned you've used walnut though. Yeah, there's black walnut. Yeah. Nice one, one that you enjoyed working with? Yeah, that was nice. Good. And uh, you can, <laughs> there's places that, uh, you know, sell firewood. Yeah. And they'll have all different kinds of wood. Yeah, yeah. So I just get some from there. Get some, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've had a, a similar experience um, with olive wood in Spain. So in Spain, because it's so plentiful, the olive wood, quite often, they'll burn it. they're burning it. Yeah. But if you, if you have a good look through, sometimes you can find some really nice stuff in amongst it. Um, because it's, it's amazing what they're, they're just burning, to be honest with you. And it's the same, this, the mahogany, we get this from, um, we get this from recycling it a lot. And if you speak to the double glazing companies that we get it off quite often, they would either burn it or, um, take it home themselves and use so the firewood. So those windows that... Windows, that door frames, yeah, so as... Double glazing Put it in plastic yeah. quite often, yeah. So we're just getting our levels, just trying to push everything back. Because it's basically when we use the belt sander to smooth everything off, we don't want to end up... If we can avoid doing the detail on it again, we will. And again, we do those stop cuts and where we lose the detail, we just go back over it so we can go deeper into the woods. Right, now this one here, again, we've got a little bit of separation for the tail and the leg. And we use the reverse angle of the gouge and then the main cutting angle. So that's a little technique that we use. I shouldn't be carving towards myself as well. That's me being a bit lazy, not turning it around in the vise. But that, can you see there, we're yeah. using the reverse angle so yep. we're not using the cutting edge, you're using the reverse angle instead. And, and that'll give it like a bevel type thing. Yeah, so you're bevel getting it like, beveling yeah. the one way and then beveling the other way as well. There we are. So we've got all of those levels and we're going to do the same as what we did at the top. We're going to push down the feet. And the bit, as I said, you've got to be most careful of when you're working on those feet is that there's little yeah. claws on the dragon because they're quite delicate especially that middle one and you can easily as you're cutting it with the grain you can easily just lose one of the claws it's looking nice it's coming on yeah it's coming on so we're going to work into again working this way to get the level for the head because that's what I'm searching for. I'm searching for a happy medium in terms of, we do a simple, a very simple dragon. We do a very elaborate one, but I'm trying to find one that- A middle of the road. A middle path. of the road, yeah. And this is where we've got to so far. Um, and it's basically a lot of what we're doing when we're carving, we're trying to get the maximum because we're doing it on a daily basis and it's what we do for, for work, we're trying to get the maximum effect for the mi minimum amount of work. Yeah. And that's basically uh, what you're trying to do. Unfortunately though, quite often there's no easy way of actually getting the effect that you want. Quite often it's just a lot of hard work. But, Got to enjoy it and uh, oh, yeah. 
So your average carving, what sort of time frame would you be spending, or does it vary quite it, a lot? It varies. Um, it varies to what else I've got going on. Yeah. Sometimes I'll just sit on the front porch and just carve, 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 carve. Yeah. And then um, sometimes I'll just like do a little bit, leave it, leave it some. You know, there's some that I've got that are a couple of years old that I haven't finished. Yeah, yeah. But I'll just go back to it. Go back to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They say that I have several jobs that you're working on at the same time. Yeah. We have numerous jobs <laughs> at the same time, but it's it's not sort of, um, it's not planned out. Right. It's just a case of we're always um, kind of like a... Somebody bailing water out out of that <laughs> sinking that sinking boat. That's what we're always tending to do. I just checked the comments as well, just in case we've missed something. I know the carver is good for helping me out if I do miss something. 